Hello and welcome back to semi-finals day here at the HCL Squash Rackets Federation of India Indian Tour, Chennai Leg. You join us here for our first men's semi-final in an all-Indian contest. Here we see Mahesh, who's knocking up currently on the right, coming off 6-3 minutes of play so far, looking in fine form so far in this event. Having won three love in both encounters. Mahesh is the uh, current world number 47. Had a couple of good events so far in this uh, COVID period. Having played in the black ball um, events that have gone on. He also holds a, a one head-to-head uh, -head advantage in previous PSA encounters against his other opponent today, which is Abe Singh. Also of India, currently sits at 149 in the world. Also looked in great form, having had a couple of upsets against seeding to get to this stage. Does mean that he's spent a bit longer on court though, 98 minutes so far on court. I'm Josh Taylor anyway, and I'm your commentator for this event, and uh, I'm joined by Chris Ryder. How are you doing, Chris? Yeah, morning, Josh. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Afternoon in Chennai, but morning here in England, where we're commentating from. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm looking forward to this match. I mean, I think the key to this one is how Abe backs up after his match yesterday, because it was a five-setter, but he was physically struggling at some points in the third and fourth game um, when he had a young Egyptian player. I was just pushing him really, really hard, and uh, he was suffering so. He managed to pull through that in the fifth with a pretty controlled and quali high quality squash. So to me, this is all about how he how he has recovered from that match and can he play at the standard he's been playing at. If he can, he'll be a threat um, because he's been playing some high quality stuff. Yeah, I saw his first round match. I've I've seen both matches of Mahesh and uh, Mahesh has looked very clinical. Um, so far in this event, played uh, yeah, he's, very well. He's very been comfortable in yesterday. his draw, hasn't he? Yeah, he was, it, it was very composed yesterday. Um, you know, it could have become a, a messy match, I think, against the five seed moves in the Mal of Egypt, but he, he kept his head down and played very clinical squash, I thought. Good lines to the back of the court. Was finishing well. To the yeah, front, sometimes it doesn't. Backhand side. Sometimes it doesn't work in your favour though if you haven't been really tested and you're not as sort of up to scratch as uh, hitting wise as maybe you'd like to be. Uh, it can work in your favour. So I imagine Abe will take the positives of his um, two upset victories, and he's definitely going to be hitting the ball well. He's going to be tactically on on song. So uh, I think. It'll be interesting to see how this first game develops. I do feel that Abe probably needs to, you know, take a lead. If he's if he's down in the game scores, he's really going to be struggling. Yeah, I'd agree with you, and I think I think that's kind of what we saw yesterday from Mahesh was when he was up. He, he was able to close out the, the match very well. Just a little bit of contact. I'm not sure how that's a let, really. Was it the previous shot that Abe's asking for? Yeah, I think he just caught him. There's a bit of a smile on his face, so I don't think it was the biggest. He certainly uh, wasn't getting a let from uh, Mahesh's shot, was he? It was. Um... You know, 
He was early on to that one there, wasn't he? And I think this is what we're going to see from Mahesh is like he, he wants to dominate that T area, you know, physically big guy and he, he really looks to hunt across the middle. I think we commentated together, didn't we, on the first match of Abe, and he, he looks a really classy player. He's taking the ball in short with a lot of ease and great lines going in. We uh, see a bit more dividends on the glass courts so or the back courts in the early rounds, but from that, interesting to see if he can yeah, have he's, he's got a um, way to start. Yeah, I, I, that definitely, I like, I like his weight of shot. He drags people up to the front with quite soft drops. And, uh, you know, he uses his hold to make sure that people aren't volleying. So he, he stops their movement on the tee and then he's able to get it through slightly softer, which means it dies in the back corners. So it really sort of lengthens out the court for his opponent. So if he can use that to get past the volley of Mahesh, then maybe he's on to something. Yeah, great. It's a bit of a contrast of styles, actually. I, I think Mahesh is... Probably plays with a bit more intensity to Abe naturally, a bit stronger around the middle of the court. I think Abe probably offers a few more options from from the corners, actually. Um, as you were kind of saying, a bit better weight, but maybe a few more little subtleties in weight of sharp rather than severity. So it's a bit of a contrast of severity against subtlety a little bit. Yeah, well, I was about to say he was pretty accurate to the back of the court. So, and then he just uh, nailed one over the over the top of the court. So, <laughs> I'll leave that. It's called a commentator's curse. That. <laughs> well, I didn't say it. I was just uh, preempting it. Um, He just seems to have Abe, he just seems to have so much time when that ball's over hit, like here, buys himself time. He's got such control at the top of his swing and stability in his stance. And that's a real threat, actually. I mean, you might be in position on the tee and it looks like you're controlling it, but actually I'd say that Abe is controlling that phase of play and it's kind of up to, up to his quality then to make the most of it. Nice passage here from Abe. String yes. together quite a few nice shots in a row here. There we yeah, go. The that. I, think it, I know it's forced the error, but it's um, there was some really nice shots back to back and just working Mahesh around the court in a lovely style there. Yeah, he sort of proved to the ref there that he could get to the ball and then just didn't play it. Difficult because there was some minimal sort of interference. Well, I think it was probably only minimal. Let them feel each other out a little bit here, Ryder, but what, what would your score prediction be here? Um... Uh, I would probably go with a three love Mahesh. I think that's going to be a big ask for Abe physically after yesterday. Um, you know, and like I say, if he goes one love down, then he's in he's in a load of trouble. Uh, uh, Mahesh will just keep piling on the pressure. Um, but. You know, I, I do think that Abe, his style doesn't necessarily lend itself to a quick start, does it? Because he's trying to take control through accuracy of hitting. Um, so there's always a kind of chance there that he can 
he can start taking control of that match and take control of the tempo and then go on a run of points himself. Um, but I'm going to stick with my three, Love Mahesh. How about you, Josh? Um, yeah, it was interesting. I, I, I feel that there's at least a game in this for Abbe, if not more. I, I, I'm going to go 3-1, Mahesh. I, I think there's going to be enough quality from Abbe at periods of this match to to at least get a game. And uh, as you say, it's then going to be a question mark on the effect of yesterday. Um, yeah, I think it's not just the physical effect, is it? When you're, you know, it's the pressure of being a homegrown player. I think there's an emotional kind of... Uh, uh, toil of being using up adrenaline in a match like yesterday's and that's difficult to replace so quickly when you don't get a rest day um, so I think physically and emotionally you know mentally he'll be he'll be tired here um, but you know I'd like him to surprise us and it will surprise me and uh, you know make this really competitive and test Mahesh Yeah, he's certainly shown that he's a young player on a move for me, Abbe, across this event so far. Yeah, he's been impressive, definitely. And this will move him up the rankings, won't it? You know, uh, that's something. Yeah. If he wins today, definitely. I mean, even if he loses today, it will, it will jump him up probably into the top. Oh, no, where is he? He's actually slipped down to about 100. And, 40, hasn't he? But he's 149. He will. Nine, I think. 149. Yeah. He'll jump back up to his yeah. original ranking pretty quickly with this sort of form. And it's not about getting to there for him. It's about getting significantly further than that. That's some great exchanges there, though, in the middle. A lot of skill, quick hands. Oh, and unfortunately, that's probably a stroke. Big lead here so far in this first game for the older of the two Indian players. Mahesh, five-point lead. Expect to see him close this out. There's two nice nice lines hit from Abe from around the middle of the court, making the most of a couple of loose balls from Mahesh. Yeah, Mahesh has started opening up a little bit as well, hasn't he? So he started chucking in a couple of different angles and trickle boasts and you know, I think he's looking to expand a little bit. Yeah, I just feel he's lost quality in doing that. He's gone a, a bit more cross-court, as you say, a bit a few more angles, and um, actually that's allowed Abe to, to find his lines and played into his hands a little bit in these last few uh, exchanges. There we go again. Again, just cutting it off. So three very similar finishes to the rallies there where... Abe has hit a very nice line, clean, not catching the sidewall, off a cross court. Just thought that was uh, Mahesh getting him back with a nice line. It, I just a little bit straighter there from Mahesh. That rally. So 
through the legs. Ah, oh, great finish. <laughs> That's a bit, some lovely bits of skill there from both players. Fast exchange, one down the middle, deliberately down the middle. They played on in between the legs and a nick nick to finish. Can't ask for much more than that. Be on the highlights reel, won't it? <laughs> Smash 10 7 here. Three more game balls. Lengthy rally here as Mass tries to get across the line. Abbe trying to make sure he stays in this first game. Oh, beautiful angle there from Abbe. Yeah, and I like the fact that Abbe is not giving up on this at all. So he's three game balls down and actually he's lengthening the rallies, which you could think is the. Uh, more fatigued player and uh, he might not want to do but actually it's suiting him the lo I think the longer rallies here have generally suited him because he he has that hold he has that you know comfortable movement when he's accurate but it's the the pressure the higher intensity that he's struggling with isn't it mm. that's a lovely finish again from around the middle Brought this right back to 10-9. Last game ball for Mahesh. We're saying crucial first game really to set the tone for this match. Really is. Big point this. It's funny how the pressure changes so much in these situations. It was, can be completely relaxed two points ago for Abe go for his shots and then all of a sudden there's a weight of expectation now that he's in with a chance and he might tighten up a little bit this is this is what he needs now I don't really feel Abe had much of a clue where that ball was going he was just running into his opponent. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it was probably a let, but uh, on another day that could have been a no let. If and if Mahesh had got that what a foot deeper in the court, then it was a no let. Yeah, I was just going to say if, if Mahesh had uh, recognised the situation a bit better there and just sent that a bit deeper, that that would have been a different outcome. And on this backhand, turn it across from Mahesh. That's good pressure there. Oh, beautiful touch. Here we good go. Pressure is well, flipped well, as well as well as I think that's his quality showing rider there, you know, the lovely drop from the back, you know, and then followed it up nicely. It was good pressure, you know, just towards the back end of the rally where it really mattered. Yeah, Mahesh has got such a fine line in some ways to because he wants to add pace to the ball, but he, he can't overhit it. He cannot afford to overhit, really. He's got to keep that accuracy. Good lift. interesting just looking at the body language isn't it Ryder you know Abe's got a bit of a buzz about him now he's got himself right in here look 
kind of player you don't really want to see with a spring his step with some of the weapons he possesses. That's a shame, isn't it? That that was a lovely boast that went in fast. I bet not happy here. I think he's probably not happy about the towel break. Yeah, he could have uh, certainly could have used the towel himself, have I? Just reset a little bit. Oh. Well, what a go way to finish the game. So there we have it. 12 10 to Mahesh. One game to love. So that was a really interesting first game there, and you can see that uh, Mahesh got off to a pretty good lead, 8-3, and it was just continued pressure, really, from him. And we had to bear in mind the uh, fatigue from the previous matches from Abe Singh, who had a five-setter yesterday, a really tough five-setter, and upset the seedings two days in a row. And uh, But once he got into the first game, then Abe started using his hold and using his accuracy to control great swathes of rallies and then was able to make the court really long with his soft drops on the back and his control and his dying lengths and uh, got it back to 10 all and then it was a bit of an up of up the intensity from Mahesh who just managed to get across the line there and I feel that was an important one there for Mahesh but it will be certainly interesting now to see if how much Abe's got left in the tank because he's proved he's competitive in this if he can match Mahesh for physicality, then his quality has been really good this week. Really good. So, certainly not all over. We'll see what this game holds, shall we, Josh? Yes, both players back on. I kind of did uh, show, right, you, you said you thought Abe would be a bit of a slow starter, and he, he was there a bit. Mahesh started well, but... Turned into a really interesting first game. It'll be interesting to see, uh, see where this goes now. That's a nice exchange to start us off. Front backhand corner. Well, this is quick. Well, I was just about to say the intensity's uh, gone through the roof from Mahesh to start this off. Really trying to show him his business here. Yeah. If he can pile on the pressure here, he might feel like that's match. Matt, the heart of the match one, isn't it? You know, to go one love up, and if he went like five one up, six two, something like that, then he can really demoralise his opponent and be physically stronger and just leave him so much to do. Yeah, there's a real intent to up the intensity here. Take the ball in a little bit more. He gets the opportunity to hit through. Still lifting at the right times. But... Well, sometimes that's the problem with trying to increase the intensity is actually you end up making the wrong shot choice. You're not lifting when you should lift. You're not focusing on accuracy. You're not watching as well. 
you know so and these things could play into Abe's hands he likes pace coming onto him he doesn't have to generate it then all the time and he can deflect that pace and deflect it round into the corners so um, you have to be careful playing at pace on such a skillful player Well, the intensity has definitely come out of it very quickly, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just to the to the accuracy, isn't it? It's become a bit bitty, which can happen. And you've got one player trying to force pace a little bit, and then you've got another player control with the control of someone like Ave. Yeah. We've got obviously a bit of discussion as well, which doesn't help a few decisions. No, I think that Mahesh should really just be getting on with it there. It's a pretty clear stroke, and he wants this to be continuous play, really. Well, Abe not happy with his movement twice there. Movement off the ball from Hesh. He felt it was going, I think, into his line that he was coming in. Wow, it was close. Saw that happen a couple of times yesterday where the player got hit by the ball. It is bouncy on there, it is hot, so those cross courts come out a long way. That's a lovely drop from Abe seeing there. And he's actually managed to get himself a 5 3 lead here, so after that initial intensity spike at the start first couple of rallies he's really brought it down to a pace where he's happy and he can impose his accuracy and that's unlucky there just catching the top of the tin a nice pattern of play there quite a controlling lob almost encouraging his opponent to hit hard from that high forehand That's an incredible bit of skill again from Abe. Couldn't back it up, couldn't capitalise on it. Now he's in trouble. Nice lift again. And there we go, fine margins. Catches the top of the tin for the second time in a row. That's just the pressure he's under. He's just under pressure, just Mahesh, just hitting it that little bit harder, getting on the ball that fraction earlier. It adds up, it adds up over over time, 10, 20, 30 shot rallies.
A critical phase of this match really now. Five all in the second. Abe does bring it back to Abe does bring it back to one all, then we're in for a bit of a match if he's got himself moving. He's got his accuracy working, he's hitting his targets at the front and he's got some threat. And if he's starting to read Mahesh a bit better as well, then you know the match is starting to swing in his hands, but he needs he ne this is such a critical phase, he needs this portion of the match. Really locked in here, Ryder, six all. I actually thought the score was six five, but <laughs> I've been watching this squash too much. Oh, that is a beautiful shot from Abe. Showing some emotion after it as well. Yeah, he he really does need this portion of the match, doesn't he? This is so critical here. Nope. That's interesting. Pretty close to a stroke, that, just looking at the line of the ball. Yeah, yeah. But my hair should have done better from there, really, I felt. Like, uh, he had an opportunity to tuck that away in the corner. Oof. Well, he's done well here, Abbe, to to keep in it to seven all, and he's he's just kind of always got a chance, even though he was ten seven down in the last game, he came back to a tie break, forced a tie break. So he's he's done done the job of staying in this game. Now he's got to be able to step up and take it away from his opponent. Great cross from, court uh, from there. Uh, yeah, Probably considering that ball was pretty good. Some of these lines are it's hitting are fantastic. It's been consistent using that cross court lift out the front backhand as well, Ryder. It's not going in or hitting something aggressive, it's the lift. It's clipping the top of the ten there though. Be annoyed well, with himself there. He'd got himself into a good position, and then a couple of uh, couple of errors, and it's flipped right back to Abe. Nine eight. Yeah, I think he's he's just uh, he's tried to force the pace, isn't he? And that's where his errors have come from. Take it in, and I don't really feel he need needed to in the last two rallies. Oh, it's a beautiful finish as well from Abe. That brings him up with two game balls here, ten eight, in this second game. And this is horribly close to your prediction being right, isn't it, Josh? Well, who knows? It might go a lot further. <laughs> He's done exceptionally well here, Abbe, from, from that close situation at mid part to find himself here at 10 8. A few errors from Mahesh and a few nice balls from him. Catching him with the racket there. Yeah. <laughs> well, despite the. Uh, yeah, I think we had a perfect view from where we were at that camera angle at the front, which um, 
I think showed a little bit of naughty movement off the ball there. Because, I mean, to be honest, he hit the neck, didn't he? If he'd, uh, if he'd let his opponent come through there, Abbe, um, it would have probably been a no let or he probably wouldn't have got the ball. Lovely touch. Oh, 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 well, if you look at the quality of that ball, it was literally rolling down the side wall, wasn't it? Which is yeah. what Mahesh is now pointing out. Yeah, a little bit of discussion, which... And I don't yeah, really see that Mahesh's movement there was any worse than Abe's movement in the, in the previous point. But anyway, there we have it. 13 minutes, second game. Younger of the two Indian players taking it 11 8 to draw us level at one game all. So we've got a match on our hands here, which is quite impressive from Abe Singh once again, who's been sort of one of the stars of the show this week and already produced two upsets of uh, seedings. And now he's firmly got himself into this match at one all. It was pretty level pegging the second game all the way through, and then he pulled away with the last four points at the end there, which actually we saw him do in his first match consistently. And I felt that um, Mahesh was trying to up the intensity, but he didn't quite get his accuracy right there. And Abe was able to pick him off, off his overhit shots, and use his lovely touch there. So this will be all to play for now. Yes, yeah, a very intriguing situation here, isn't it? Good finish from Mahesh there to take the first point on the board in this third game. We'll be, it's... Uh, I think this first passage could set a bit of a tone. It, if it goes tight, you know, it's, if one player can get ahead, get a bit of a lead, it might just swing some momentum. But if it goes tight, I think we could be locked in for quite a bit longer, Ryder. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Mahesh has been able to sustain a an intensity that Abe is uncomfortable with for long enough. Um, you know, I think he's trying to increase the tempo, isn't he? But he's not quite reading him well enough. He's not quite getting on the ball early enough to be able to do that for sustained periods of time to get into him physically. <laughs> so very good exchange there. <laughs> Probably hit the ball back to each other. Looked like a little <laughs> skill game. Yeah, he's just, in passages, Mahesh has done enough to to trouble. It's not been sustained, you know. Uh, I think it's that sustained pressure that he's going to need to put someone of the, the skill set of Abbe away. And it's credit to the, the younger player as well, you know, using his variation to keep getting himself back into this match. Soft error there off the serve. It's not putting enough pace on what was a soft lobbed serve. Oh, 
Well, your prediction ride has gone out the window. So, um, it has, hasn't it? But I'm pleased in a way because, well, I, I am pleased for the sake of the game. I thought that Abe would really struggle to come back after that match yesterday, to be honest, because there were points in that he looked down, at, down and out. Um, and that I know from experience how hard that is to come back the next day and actually increase because he's got to play a better player. He's got to play the number one seed here. Hmm. Yeah, now he now he has actually settled into this match. It doesn't. It looks very even, doesn't it, on the face of it? Yeah, I'd agree with you. There's um, becomes very hard to call at this stage. Not quite covering off the ball as he was at the start of the match, though, Abe. So. You know, some of the effects you were talking about, there's just a few movements there, a little bit slower off the ball. Yeah, and he's guessed a few times, hasn't he? And he's got it right so far, but yeah. he won't be able to keep getting it right. I don't feel that it was necessarily... Uh, there's a fine line between anticipating and guessing, isn't there? And he was on the guessing end of it. Yeah, I'm just watching a few of his lunges out the back of the court. It's just starting to look a little bit heavier. Nice counter there, good line hit after setting up the diagonal. Yeah, Hesh really just needs to get out of the way there, like he'd hit a nice line, it probably would have been a winner, but it's quite clearing enough. Yeah, that's happened a couple of times, hasn't it? You know, it's actually in his favour to make his opponent go and get it if, when he's hit a quality shot, which that is. Don't see too many of those, do you, with the um, three wall Nick Boast winners? Yeah, I think we're just starting to see some of the effects of yesterday in Abbey. I do think, you know, his ball got caught behind him there, just a few little uh, twitches between point as well. Big lead yeah, this here. Has gone from quickly. This has run away a bit. He was just onto that ball very, very early, wasn't he? And, you know, it's such fine margins in squash where, you know, you start to read someone a bit better, you start to get a fraction more accurate or your opponent's physicality dips a little bit and points go very, very quickly. Yeah, it's looking like Abe as well has, has binned off this, this third game, a bit of a regroup phase. Probably uh, getting himself his head right for mounting a bit of a comeback. Looking very lethargic in his walk to the service box there. Yeah, but you'd want to make sure your racket skills are, you're feeling confident about them going into the next game, wouldn't you? Hmm. Yeah, it's part of this sort of ebbs and flows of match, and it's a bit of a weird phase here. It's not quite closing it out how he'd got to his big lead, and uh, Abe looking very relaxed. But here we go, we've got game balls 10 4.
and done first time. 11-4 to Mahesh. That's the third game. Takes him to a 2-1 lead. So a pretty convincing third game there for number one seed Mahesh and you can see that passage of play there where he just pulled away four points to nine points and uh, Abe was definitely starting to struggle and feel the physicality of this match and previous matches and he's still, he's still in this, he's definitely playing at a very high level. Um, can he get it back? Can he have one big last push here? He's certainly got the skills to unsettle with the number one seed here. So we'll see if there's a big push here at the start. There'll need to be, but Mahesh is going to keep piling on the pressure. Yeah, Abe returns to the court. Fresh shirt. Maybe a bit of a psychological thing. A bit of a refresh. Get the mind back going. Do you think... Um, one of the things he'll take from this tournament is he's got to have faster starts and start imposing himself earlier in games and matches. Yeah, I'd agree with you, uh, Ryder, in that. And um, I just think as well, you know, you, you're going to have to back up matches. It's the nature of, of the sport, isn't it? So, um, you know, we're seeing a few physical signs. So I guess just that, that confidence in backing up matches. And I think there's a lot of positives to take away from it. You know, he's um, really showed his skill set. I think he's uh, gone about his business in a really good way as well. Certainly uh, showing the standard of a player that's much higher than his ranking. With more events coming back, more experience, I expect to see him as a player on the move a little bit here. Yeah, I think one of the nice things, it's, a, it's an enjoyable brand of squash to watch, isn't it? You know, he's a, you get a let there. Yeah, he's a, he shapes up really nicely for the shots. You know, he's got threat, he's got options, he's got variety. There's a lot of skill in there. So, you know, it's something that we'd like to see more and more of coming up in PSA. And we are, I mean, with this, the skill level on show at the, the top of the sport this, these days is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a modern brand of squash, isn't it? It's a brand that's ready for where the sport's at. So, certainly with more experience and, you know, as the quality refines, I think he's set up to do well. As you'd expect, he's got a little bit of buzz back, Abe, just um, starting to put some patterns together here. 
Yeah, Manette Mahesh needs to, for his part, he needs to keep his discipline. He needs to keep that ball pretty tight, doesn't he? And, you know, apply pressure when it's appropriate. You know, it's, I feel sometimes he's trying to apply pressure and he's a bit deep in the corners to be able to do that. Um, and it shouldn't really hurt him to go slow for a little bit and make the rallies a bit longer and then increase the pressure when, when it's the right time. Yeah, and I think it's just that, I mean, here he's starting to straighten out again, but it, it's just that little bit from Mahesh where he starts to go a little bit wayward, starting to open the course up a little bit more. And actually, Phil, he's got a lot more reward in this match from the, the straighter passages where he's hit really quality lines with weight to the back of the court, just limiting Abbe's options, really. Just really good, simple squash done very well, but not getting caught in some of the open passages where, where that's where Abbe's skill set and his options lends itself oof <laughs> crikey Bad error there from yeah, the end of the good. court from Abe. It's just opened up a two point lead from Mahesh. He's going to have to respond here. He doesn't want this to race away. A couple of errors now. Yeah, I think that's a fair decision, actually. I mean, Mahesh's racket went very high, very quickly, looking for, for Abe, rather than trying to find a line round there. Well, I'd like to see a replay of that, Josh. I wasn't so sure. <laughs> you know, I thought the, it just, the quality yeah. of Abe's shot there, it did, it pop, I thought it popped out, caught the sidewall, popped out. Um, I thought it was closer to a, a stroke, but, you know... That's why I'm not. Yeah, it's just how high his racket was and how quickly he just went for Abe. I think the way he went about it didn't help. But that's uh, it's probably helped the match out though. It's brought, brought it back to four all, and um, that lead, little lead that Mahesh built, has, has gone very quickly. aggressive line yeah, so that's a pretty incredible shot really I mean he's hit that about as hard as he can hit it from a high backhand about half an inch above the tin um, <laughs> don't know if you could ask for much more well I don't know if he pushed him there he's uh, Yeah, I feel that's a bit of an exaggeration. I'd, I'd have to see a replay to, to see that. But it, it definitely wasn't yeah. a two-handed shot because he's got a racket in one hand. So <laughs> he's got, yeah, and he was facing the other way playing a shot. Maybe he got caught yeah. up in his legs. <laughs> Hold at the front, just elongating the court. That's a nice shot there, great dying length. This is going to hurt. Mm -hmm. no.
Just getting straight out. I mean, the rest straight of the movement there. It did, it did. It put together a really nice rally, and then actually it was a, a loose shot to to finish. But what's noticeable there, Ryder, was just the line of the cross court just starting to run away from Abe. Whereas um, previously in this match, where where Mahesh has gone cross court, it's gone a bit wider and actually just opened the court up a bit. Just starting to find a slightly different angle on his cross court. Yeah, I feel Mahesh is starting to get a good accuracy on his lengths a bit more here. They're, they're not coming off the back wall. They're not giving him extra time. But he, obviously you've got the danger with Abe. If you leave it too short, he will use his skills of uh, nice line hitting and, and taking the pace off the ball to, uh, to punish you that way as well. So you do really have to try and match him as best you can for accuracy on the length hitting. But at the same time, players want to force the pace. Mm. That's a fine line they tread, but when they do get it right, it's it's a hard battle there. When Mahesh is getting that right, hitting down on the ball, it's hitting the back of the service box type of length. Um, that's pretty pretty good stuff, really. Right there, that's a good shot. Got him in trouble. Put the kill in. Oh, I don't know how he's got that out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand Mahesh's f frustration here. I don't think I was anywhere near a let, but it's still not in his favour to dwell on that and to argue with the ref. He, ne he needs to stop looking at his rag and get his shoulders up and get on with the next point. He was on a good roll mm. there. Yeah, and I think it's also the, the consistency you know, of what he was doing and also the time between rallies. I mean, he wants to really pile on the pressure and keep the intensity going in this match. He still wants to talk about the previous rally, doesn't he? So he definitely hasn't got that one out of his head. He's not going to change the ref's mind now on the previous rally, is he? <laughs> He does not look happy. <laughs> still trying to get rid of it, isn't he? He's still trying to let that thought disappear. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's one of the skills that you probably don't appreciate watching watching the squash. I mean, it's just sort of like you're just taking it at face value. But what they're thinking, the players, they've got to deal with all these like, highs and lows within the match and uh, keeping yourself on an even keel mentally and emotionally and on a positive end of that is just so difficult and it takes so much practice and uh, you know that's you're training for that as well aren't you that's happening all the time in your training mm. what's happened here is has a light gone out josh it just uh yeah we've got Oh, we're getting a bit of a mop of the court. It's one of it's one of two things. <laughs> well, I just felt the well. power went out. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> well, this does happen every now and again. Leon. Six, seven. Yeah, nine, eight.
trying to demonstrate with a bit of a hula hoop technique there in the back corner but I've come back Josh and you're talking about hula hoops oh yeah, that's yeah. amazing that's, that's dive find it. yeah that's what happens when you disappear rider I just go to a complete shambles um yeah we're back from the abyss um yeah just a bit of interference in the front corner and Abe was trying to demonstrate what by what looked like a a hula hooping technique to be honest and um good rally here intensity coming back through i think abe was asking for a let given the fact that the floor was wet there after his dive now that can't be the right score can it it's not seven six 10-8 match ball. 10-8 match ball, yeah. So uh, here we go. Two match balls, Mahesh. And score throws with us, I think, Ryder. Two match balls. Another good cross court. I 
feel that is a let, but against such a large amount of space for Abbey to play, and he's better off playing that ball and just uh, finding the line straight onto the forehand side. Yeah, pretty much anywhere on the forehand wins in the point. Great line great from Abbey. That takes one match ball away. 10 9, now 9 10. Still clinging in here. Oh. There we have it. 11-9 match to Mahesh, three games to one. Number one seed takes it. High-ranked player takes it in this all-Indian uh, battle. So there we have the, the overall score, six, seven minutes in total. 12-10, 8-11, 11-4, 11-9, 21 minute last game. Match uh, bookended by a 20 minute and a 21 minute game. Three games to one to yeah. Mahesh. That was a proper contest, um, which fair play to Abe Singh, who had a really tough match yesterday, and that was his uh, it upset two seedings in the previous two rounds. And I was personally concerned about his physicality coming into this, having had such hard matches. And he gave us a, a really good test for Mahesh there. Like Mahesh will know he was in a match, and I think. In hindsight, that's probably a good match for Mahesh, who's who's had a relatively easy passage before that, and now is in the final and uh, will be playing a bit better because of that match. But ultimately, it was probably Mahesh's uh, pressure pressure play which got him there. He was getting on the ball early, hitting it hard, trying to take the tee away that uh, Abe just couldn't quite get past with his accuracy and holds and skill to the front. But a really good match. I enjoyed that one. So that's the first of our semi-finals here today. Um, our next match in all Egyptian affair, which will be with you very shortly. It's Malak Kamal. <laughs> So here's the overview of our schedule today. Just finished our first of our men's semi-finals with Mahesh of India, the number one seed, taking it three games to one in a, a fine match against his fellow Indian compatriot, Abe Singh. And you join us here for the second of our semi-finals on semi-finals day and the first of our women's matches. Malik Kamal against Rana Ismail, both from India. They're both from Egypt, sorry. First one was just both from India. So, both kind of progressing in similar amount of match times, despite it being a, a 3 2 match for Malik Kamal beating the number one seed in the quarterfinals. She's spent uh, 61 minutes on court so far. It's Rana Ismail, number seven seed in this event, who spent just 46 minutes on court. These players have played once before on uh, on PSA, with the head-to-head -head being uh, one love to Malik Kamal, which would give us a bit of an indication that we might say uh, an upset to the to the rankings here. It's a three-one win, not that long ago. And so that Malik uh, Kamal is ranked at two hundred and sixteen in the world versus uh, Rana Ismail's one hundred and sixty-six. I'm Josh Taylor, and I'm joined for this match by Andrew Cross. Hi, Josh. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. Thank you, Crossy. 
Did you enjoy that first semi-final? Yeah, it was a, it was a good match actually. Um, I see two Indian players playing on uh, home soil, and um, yeah, it was a good contest. Some, uh, some really good squash, nice contrast of styles as well. Yeah, I thought it was a, it was a good match. Abbe has obviously had a good week, and uh, I'm sure he'll be happy to have taken a game there and pushed Mahesh pretty close. But I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to this, to see these two young up upcoming Egyptian girls in action. Yeah, not a lot between the age. Both both young these two players, both uh, born in uh, two thousand and two. Any four months between them, three months between them. Rana Ismail, the the younger of the two. Yeah, good start from uh, from Kamal. She's just getting the ball, just. Just a little bit deeper in the court. I mean, yesterday she was firing it in pretty, pretty sharp, pretty quick. Um, she's she's hitting a few of the more back corners so far in these first two rallies. But she won't be afraid to uh, take it short, as we saw yesterday. bit of extra extra power on that cross court from from Ismail there just getting it through to the back of the court pretty uh, easy error there from from Kamal as she just puts a, puts a return of serve into the tin Yeah, the age gap crossy is just crossing uh, the junior non junior boundary, hence the goggles being worn from Rana Ismail and not from Malik Khan. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they were both for the British Open a couple of years ago. In the last yeah. one, 2020, so. Yeah, not. 18 and 19, so. A little bit unlucky if you're still having to play in the in the eyewear. Thought she might have taken that forehand on a little bit quicker there, Kamal, as she just moved this mill just out of position. Yeah, nice. That nice backhand shot just to the back of the box there. Uh, I thought I thought Kamal was going to take it in a little bit quicker earlier in the rally. Just probably waited a little bit too long. Yeah, she just let the ball come to her a little bit in these uh, this early stage, hasn't she? Just the ball come back and forth a little bit. Yeah, not a let there, I don't think. Not enough effort to, uh, to go and get that ball. Sure. I thought it stay quite Yeah, I did as well. I was I thought at first probably more of a no let than a stroke. It's a bit Kamal's playing a little bit more deeper than she did yesterday. A lot of these balls that she's hitting yesterday would have gone short, so Trying to hit the back corners a little bit more than what she did yesterday. Maybe just trying to make that court nice and big like there. Wait for Ismail to go to the front and then, then move her up. But yeah, yesterday anything that was loose, she was just taking it in as, as quick as possible really yesterday. 
We've seen that a lot in the women's uh, matches so far. Some um, very clinical performances, and uh, yeah, just just finding their own. She's just working the space a little bit more, making it a bit bigger. Yeah, it's good. Some good hit in this. We'll just lean him backwards on that one. Didn't quite get that timing right. Yeah, the last meeting, Crossy was three one, but you know, looking at the matches in this event, this event so far, I don't think there's going to be a huge amount between these two. Well, yeah, I, I think this is going to be pretty tight. It usually, can get a little bit edgy. Um, two players from the same country playing each other. It's uh, they kind of know each other's games, and I'm sure they've played a lot. Not on the PSA. That's not in that record. Yeah, I'm sure they've they've met plenty of times. That's, that's maybe that's why we're seeing a little a little game change yeah. here from Kamal. I mean, yesterday everything was just going short, and today it's it's going a lot deeper. Oh, nice. Anything that would say that they might not have played each other quite as much crossy is that we've got um, a geezer Giz, residence for for Rana Ismail and Alexandria for Malik Kamal, which is the old uh, sort of uh, northern northern central kind of Egypt kind of. Uh, Combination going on the Cairo Alexandria type battle. Right. She's playing well though, Ismail. So far, she's managed to uh, open up a three-point lead in this game. Just moving it around nicely. I, li I like to watch the, the young Egyptian girls play. They're usually very sharp around the front of the middle of the court. Never afraid to take it in, never afraid to take it on. Um, like no, no fear, almost. Oh, it's a great pickup. So, uh, Ismail finding himself at game balls here. Three game balls, 10 7 up. A little bit optimistic there, trying to close it out. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, he really got, I mean, it was. Yeah, we saw this yesterday. The serve is very, very important. Uh, and if you're not, if you're not hitting the side wall and taking it all the way into the back, then you're going to be putting up, these girls are going to put you under some pressure. Yeah, I mean that went in fantastically short, fantastically quick. Yeah, and then another a nice little variation, nice little trickle burst in the front. One forehand there. Two game balls saved. It's probably going to be a stroke as well, I would have thought. Back to ten all. Oh. Oof! Crikey, she went down heavy there. Yeah, that was quite quite a heavy fall. That actually. Hopefully, she's all right. She got straight back up though. Yeah. Yeah, fair play to her. She's um, she's straight into it. Straight into it and won the point as well. <laughs> so, yeah. That's 11 all. Oh, 
Oh, just got a little bit close to that. Well, there's a good opportunity for her to hit that that winner down the down the side wall there. If she didn't hold back, I mean that would a fair lick on it. Come out of pace, put on the ball. Yeah. It's close, close to no let for me that. Yeah, I was going to say I was looking more towards a no let there. I thought there was plenty of room for her to play that. Ref going for the let. I mean, it, critical face should have been better just going straight to that and putting that away. A bit yeah. edgy trying to close this game out. Oh, that's that's going to be a stroke. So there we have it. First game to Ismail, 13-11. She leads yeah, one game to love. Good first game there from Rana Ismail. I'm sure she's uh, very happy with taking the opening game. Um, I think she, she played really well there, probably... We're back, Rana Ismail taking that first game, losing out in the tie break. Just a little bit edgy towards the back end of the, the game, looking for the ref to help her out with a few decisions rather than trying to finish it, but understandable in a, a tight contest. As we expected in this uh, match, not a lot between these so far, nothing at all really. at the front from come out and flip back by his mouth. Uh, getting behind her there. Certainly wasn't a straight just with the position of the ball. Oof. The heavy uh, bit of contact. Second time in this match. Just getting straight back up, but come on, just uh, taking a little walk. Just worried about the ankle there. Just, just clipped it with the uh, the knee. No awkward uh, the body to catch. Looking like she's stepping in a bit more. I know Ismail's still a little bit edgy towards the end of the first game, as much as she finished it, it closed it out. Just showing a bit more a bit more emotion. Going with the ups and the downs of the, the match. Well, 
So uh, that return's gone a long way out there. Yeah, we've had a couple so far in this uh, second game. Keep the ball boys uh, in uh, involved. Oh, it's a great drop. Beautiful soft touch there, Crossy. Yeah, just the way she was able. To, I mean, she's she's a tall girl, so the way she managed to get down and and just pick it up onto the front wall, it's very good. Nice angle to see. It's just look from that angle there, it just looked like I mean it's hard to see, but it just looked like she kind of made a, a run into the back of Ismail there rather than going for it. But a little bit hard to see where the line was, but from that back angle, it just looked a little bit like she ran into Ismail. Yeah, I was going to say, they had all the front wall to aim at there. Referee's gone with a no let. The, um, the cushion just starts to open up. It's, uh, but I mean, that's fantastic. Winner there just absolutely fired into the front of the court. Huge amount um, of pace on it. Kamal has this, she has an ability to win rallies quickly, so it's a good thing to have, you know, she can quickly turn things around, so Ismail needs to be a little bit careful here, while she has a two-point advantage, uh, she needs to be careful that this could, Kamal can put some winners together rather quickly. Mm. Again, that's a nice tight drive down that back, and we saw Kamal play last night against Sananya, and so now you look like she had a couple of big leads and then just quickly Kamal's just able to put big patches of points together. Yeah, and uh, you called it crossy, right back at six all. In no time. Yeah. It's just that drop is, I, I love that drop, it's a good margin on the front wall there, it stays floor first, very tight, very difficult to, to scrape it back on the front wall. Great boast and a big chance if she, I thought she was going to be a little bit quicker there. But yeah, still just she's needed a winner. faster follow up, didn't they? Just needed yeah, to step up was, onto that. But yeah, I agree with the, you, uh, I thought. Thought she was going to step up a quicker, as you said there, and either hit the straight drive, but Crosscourt still won it for her. Quick, quick run of five points. Ah, oh, beautiful little trickle boast. Run continues. Six yes, points on the bounce very quickly. Yeah, it's, it's still quite game. good up to up to six three, and then so she, she just has an ability. It's, it's a good thing to have to be able to win rallies quickly, and she's done that here. Yeah, and there she goes from six three down to close it out eleven six. Yes, they have it one all. Games are tied.
So currently we're standing at one game all here. Malik Kamal, as she was yesterday, is straight back into court. No messing around yesterday either. She was always back on court first, getting a few hits in before the start of the next game. Ismail started the second game well, led 6-3, but very quick winners from Kamal. So we're back in it. Look forward to an exciting third game here, Josh. Yeah, I think we said at the start that we didn't expect a huge amount between these two and um, we're getting a good billing so far. Exciting squash as well, a lot of winners. Points rattled off quickly when the time emerges. A few fantastic lines already in this uh, opening rally from Mike Kamal. Yeah, the lines on them. On, on the drives and the cross courts and that's a great drop again that floor first drop into the front makes it really difficult for your opponent to take it oh. but yes you've just got to be <laughs> careful with the serve you just put it into that hitting area there and you're really asking for trouble Oh, nice. Great hands. Yeah, she's quite late into that, and then just so quickly that she can just turn it the other direction. It was a nice little change from the in the hands, wasn't it, last minute? Yeah, just changing it. It's good. I do feel, Crossy, that Malik Kamal could look for the follow-up a little bit more from a, a short ball. It's just been a little bit slow on some of the follow-up, taking it in but not quite looking for the ball after, which it is coming back. Yeah, he smells getting it back. And... Yeah, even on, on that kind of similar burst, she was... She stretched Ismail out into the front and then didn't quite follow it up quick enough for the cross court. Ismail just leaning back a little bit there on that one. Just a little bit unhappy with that. Really nice. She just there, just this male just played a, a drop, but then just hung back a little bit too deep on the tee. And Kamal's got the racket skills to be able to go in there and do many different things, either a counter drop or a trickle burst, as she did there, and it makes life so difficult to read. This run of points here is just continuing. All the momentum at the moment is, is with Kamal, you know. It's, it's going to be hard for Ismail to try and rescue this back. Yeah, as you've said, Crossy, I mean, when she gets the momentum, it's it's really hard to play against. She just rattles off points very quickly. The lead builds fast and runs away. Again, and that's it, beautiful. It just a nice weight on that boat. just working it around the walls. Another winner. <laughs> yeah, it can, she could just rattle them off very, very quickly. She's obviously sky high confident at the moment. She, she's won, what, 14 of the last 16 rallies. Nine, two. Can good touch. It, it, bit of a confidence player as well, Crossy. You know, when you get, she gets this momentum, it just, it just keeps going. It goes very quickly as well, racing ahead. It's 9 2 lead. Yeah, it's, it's quick. And again, you're just not sure where she's going to do. She hit that so low that it looked like she was going to flick it back cross court. And then last minute, she hits the straight drop. Crikey, and there we have it. Absolutely racing to a 2 1 lead. 11 2 in this third game to Malik Kamal.
Uh, so as you can see, the quick quick run of points from from two all really all the way through to eleven two for Kamal. So Ismail has got to do something here. She's lost from the she was winning the second six three, and from there it's kind of been a one way traffic at the moment. So here we go for game four. Kamal, as usual, back on court nice and early. Getting that ball warmed up. And uh, looking for a spot in the final here. Yeah, it's going to have to be a response from Rana Ismail here. She's going to have to uh, really start well, I feel. The momentum very much in Kamal's favour. Yeah, that was a that was a good cross cut. That was that was the first time she's hit it a little bit harder and a little bit firmer for a while into that back corner and hopefully she's gonna try and put a little bit more pace on the ball to try and make life a little bit uncomfortable for Kamal. But the danger is there that you just occasionally drag one down the middle and give away a stroke. But yeah, she's got to try and upset this rhythm here of Kamal. Bit unsure on that ball there. It sounded good, but to be honest, looked down. It's the uh, same bit of the glass below. Yeah, no, oh, and the left must have must have been good. <laughs> yeah, there's the ace. Serve that, serve that straight into the nick. Just gonna come out and start hitting a little bit firmer here. I feel this male, and it's just gonna try and make life a little bit more uncomfortable for Kamal. It's got to, doesn't want to with balls like that where she has time to pick her shot. And that there was some nice subtlety in the hands there. I thought. Well, I see the use of the hands up front. Front two corners is very good from both players. It's a great touch. Yeah, they've both done well up the front, especially in some some quite awkward positions. But. Felt to me a little bit harsh, Crossy. It felt like it rolled rather than sat up, but yeah, didn't clear. Yeah, I also felt it's probably a little bit far, just a little bit. But as as from yesterday, what do I know, mate? I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, there, was, uh, there was no protest, so, so maybe we don't know anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's good though for Miss Mail. She's come out. She's hitting this ball firmer, trying to apply a little bit more pressure. That I think that's that's better from her. She's just got to be ready that if it does sit up at the back there, she gives away a big opportunity for Kamal to attack into the front. Yeah, there's certainly been a oh. bit more about it, isn't there? Yeah, she's firing it in now as well. That was a great return of serve. Nice and quick into the nick. She's got to be careful here with her serve, though. Opportunity there to, to open up a two-point lead. Oh, that one's gone. Yeah, that's, a bit uh, of a funny, funny bounce there in the back corner and just caught her a little bit off, off balance. Some good fielding in the deep there. That was fired back in. <laughs> Whoa, that's outrageous when off a serve. Again, just could be so careful, so deadly. Come on, give her an inch and she'll uh, take a mile. Yeah, not messing around. Oh. There's the belly flop. Yeah. 
a uh, no wipe in the court today. Although Mahesh is still sat outside the back of the court, he was a good court cleaner. Yeah, he's um, perfected the use of the mop, which is um, <laughs> nice to see. <laughs> Uh, created some good space there. Got got Kamal stuck behind her, and uh, hit, hit that into the front corner. It's good for Miss Mail. She's got herself back into it. She's managed to disrupt the rhythm here of Kamal. Getting that intensity back into the ball. Getting the hitting back into it. She's not enjoying this. I don't feel. Again, though, it's just the serve just straight onto the racket and just kind of gives away a little bit of momentum. You just feel with Kamal Crossy that even with a lead here, you just she's so deadly. Like, yeah, yeah and a quick stroke, quick stroke there, and she's yeah. I was probably going off for a let, but a quick stroke, and she's back to within one point. We know we, she can rattle them off quickly. Yeah, you just That's cannot nice. ease up on her because there we go, it's 9 all. And the momentum's back with Kamau, you feel, after a lot of good work from Ismail. There's definitely room to play there. I don't think it was a stroke. If I thought the ref was going to go more no let there, which might have been a little bit harsh, especially at nine all. But yeah, it was definitely not a stroke for me that one. Yeah, they're both just a bit edgy in what they're asking for. Um, there's been a few like that throughout the match. She played that trickle bus really nice earlier. Come on, just not quite got that one right. And that one's going to be a stroke. Oh, she's gone down heavy again. Straight back up, though. <laughs> so, uh, no messing from these two. Oh, she gets back up faster than most footballers. <laughs> Oh, what a shot. <laughs> that's, one way. that's what you'd knock her down and she just comes back with a cross court nick. I mean, that's the second time that's happened. And, uh, her response is to fire it in the nick. 10 all. I mean, you, you might be just te tempted just to serve from the other side, just to, just to see if you can take that nick away from it. Oh, that's trouble. It's, it's Better hitting though from Ismail. She's got Malik. She's got Kamal hitting a few more side walls when she's hitting firmer, but she's missed the drop. Yeah, it's poor error from the front. She's starting to look a little bit better, but here we go. We've got 11 10, first match ball on the uh, cards. See if uh, can, Kamal can be as clinical as she's been throughout this match at times. Oh, what a <laughs> There we have it. So it's 12-10, uh, 3-1. Uh, yeah, lucky bounce at the back of the box. A slightly older Egyptian player taking it three games to one. So Malik Kamal becomes our first finalist in the women's draw. Winning in 36 minutes. 11-13, 11-6, 11-6.
Hello and welcome back to the squash here in Chennai. Um, this is the second men's semi-final featuring Kareem El Hamami from Egypt against Todd Harity from the US. Uh, this promises to be a, a pretty good encounter with the uh, this is a two and three seeds. They're close in in rankings, and uh, they've both they've both had they've both been tested. Kareem in particular yesterday against uh, Mustafa El Serti, which everybody was. Uh, really looking forward to it. it as an intriguing match, and uh, I think this one will be too. It's quite a tough one to call. I'm Chris Ryder, and I'm joined today by PSA player Owen Taylor. Owen, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Chris. Looking forward to this match. Yeah, have you have you played either of these two? I haven't had the opportunity to play either of these two, but Kareem was my, well, just above me in the junior age groups. So I grew up watching him play quite a lot at the junior events. Uh, speaking yesterday, he was I watched him. Champion. Yes, yeah, I watched I watched that final that he played versus Fares. Um I was speaking with Crossy yesterday about it, saying how, how they've both gone on in their careers and how obviously Fares has done exceptionally. And um, how Kareem perhaps wasn't deemed to have done so well, but if you com that's in comparison to obviously these Egyptians who've had astronomical rises to the top of the game very quickly. But if you compare him to these, some of his like European counterparts, he's actually done pretty well. He's had a lot of success on the PSA World Tour. Yeah, it's a tough comparison for those Egyptian players, isn't it? When you look at things like World Junior Champions, and I was looking at the British Junior Open winners, the under-19s, and it was a run of um, Rami, Mossad, uh, Mohamed El Shabagi, Marwan El Shabagi, Ali Farag, uh, Faraz Dasuki. I mean, they're all just steaming up there, aren't they? So I imagine the weight of expectation winning major junior titles like that is huge. You know? Like you say, he's, yeah, he's a very good player in his own right. Exactly, and I think this should be a really highly contested match. I'm not sure, despite Todd being the higher seed, I'm not sure he'll be going into this mentally thinking that he's the favourite. I think both players will be going into this expecting an extremely tough match. There's not much between them on the rankings. Yeah, I think Todd's been... Uh around that ranking for a few years now isn't he? he's quite established there and you know it's his consistency which keeps the top 50 ranking you know and he's very and he is solid as a player isn't he you know he he sort of does everything pretty pretty well um very good all-round player i'd say yeah there's another thing we we bridged earlier in the week where what i said i liked about todd is he's taken different opinions on from different coaches moved around the world a bit and really sort of refined his game. And he is solid as a player, isn't he? You know, he, he sort of does everything pretty pretty well. Um, very good all-round player, I'd say. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not... Yeah, there's another thing we there. tell you the week where what I said I liked about Todd is he's taken different opinions on from different coaches, moved around the world a bit, and really sort of refined his game. And he is solid as a player, isn't he? You know, he, he sort of does everything pretty pretty well. I think they had us apologies, on loop there, little... Owen. <laughs> yeah, apologies. I think, uh, yeah, a little sound overlap. <laughs> so do you want to make any predictions for this? I know that is throwing you under the bus a bit here. I was quite impressed with how solid Todd was yesterday without making too many risky plays. I think he was hitting the space really nicely. He was using the height on the front wall, really mixing the paces up. So I, I think that will disrupt Kareem here and perhaps force him into going for things which might not be on. So my prediction is going to be 3-1 Todd. What about yourself? Well, I, just to make it fun, I will go the other way. I think that uh, Kareem 
dealt well with a very difficult threat from Masafa El Serti yesterday. Um, and I think that's going to put him in good stead for this, this match here. I think perhaps the conditions might suit um, a player from Egypt who's used to very hot conditions um, a bit more, but we'll see, we'll see. So I'll go Kareem. Yeah, it's definitely going to be one of those games where the first game is so important. The, both players looking to be positive and really impose themselves on the other. One thing we did see yesterday with Hamami was just the first couple of rallies in the first game were extremely scrappy. Both players just not quite finding their length and taking it in short too early, perhaps, in the rally. So it'll be interesting to see if he's adapted his game to play perhaps a more conservative American player here. Yeah, there's no doubt he gets an incredible amount of balls back, Kareem. You know, he's very, very agile in his movement and elastic almost in his flexibility. Um, but does he always impose that structure of play that, you know, I think that's the battle here, isn't it, of um, a more sort of structured player against a more reactive player, I suppose, of uh, El Hamami. Yeah, I'd agree with that, I think. Todd definitely looks like the sort of player who likes to play in front and I'd say his sort of best games are when he is in front and he's controlling everything on from the tee. Whereas Hamami, like you say, is, is very dynamic and he can sort of attack from anywhere on the court, which means he doesn't have to be on the tee to rattle off points and be effective. That's a nice finish there from him. Yeah, and he had the option to try and force a stroke there, but it's nice to see see him play the ball. He actually played it brilliantly. Very casual, wasn't it? I like the lifting here from Parity. He's uh, just gaining that control, isn't he, over the tee a little bit more by doing that. doesn't always have to lift it, but he is doing it. It's buying himself time, and he's then trying to use his hold. He's in a bit of trouble there. Maybe one yeah, bit not too quite the, Exactly. Not quite the target he wanted off that one. A nice tight squeeze from Hamami in the front of the court. It's interesting to see Todd's not taking it into the front of the court as perhaps aggressively as he was yesterday. I think maybe he might feel maybe under pressure by Hamami's quality from the front in this game and looking to really make sure the opportunities he takes are clear cut. Yeah, I don't think that's a bad tactic from, from Todd. I think, you know, you've got to give your opponent what they least want. And uh, to a certain extent, Hamami wants to be running onto balls at the front of the court, open squash. And at the moment, Todd is uh, denying him that. And he's going to frustrate him around the back of the court and beat him with quality and consistency. He's not beating him at the moment because he's 4-2 down, isn't he? But, you know, that's the plan, I guess. I think it's always tough at the, the start of the first game to take read too much into the points. I think sometimes it takes you a few rallies to get into your game plan, get used to how your opponent's coming at you and sort of adjust accordingly. I think the sort of yeah, business ends. Yeah, exactly. 
six or seven or yeah, I think is when your, you're your job is to establish patterns to establish the tempo that you want at the start of the match and it's less about the score obviously like if you're losing six one that's far from ideal isn't it but you know there's there's no real need to panic and which to be fair Todd hasn't done from four one down here he's set his stall out and he's he's going to be playing constructive squash so I think he's got himself into this match quite well. Yeah, it's very, very even so far. There's not one player clearly dominating the rallies. It was early dive there from Hamami, yeah. <laughs> showing his dexterity around the court. He's almost just gets up, slides in one motion, doesn't he? He doesn't spend any time on the ground there at all. Yeah, that was... Um... Some people just have got that diving ability, and uh, it was never for me, really. <laughs> I, I think I'll go, go down like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I did do like one that. once, yeah. I, I remember. <laughs> oh, dear. It was, it was more of a belly flop. I hurt myself, and I never did it again. <laughs> it's an interesting debate, isn't it, whether diving is a good or bad movement quality? I, I do think it is an interesting debate. I mean, I'm even though I never did it, I see that it's useful sometimes, but I think it's probably overdone these days. Um, and actually, if you do move technically, we shouldn't dive very often at all. Um, you know, maybe once every few matches would be yeah, probably sensible. Well, I mean, you've got to consider that some of the best movers on the tour and look at Farag, who's just so smooth, you just very, very rarely see him dive, don't you? Gawad as well. Elias, all great movers. Yeah, but I wouldn't say Paul Cole and Joel making a terrible movers, and they both dive a bit, don't they? So, um, Well, exactly. I think it's you know, a different style of movement, though, isn't it? You're right. Both players going quite passive here, not injecting too much pace into the ball. Just trying to hit the space on the court. It's a nice angle there from Hamami. Yeah, and he set it up, didn't he? Set that up. Yeah, you're right. It was it was a passive rally, but then he took the initiative and went for a, a long range forehand drop, followed by another one, and then a bit of skill. Um, so he is willing to take on, you know, difficult attacks from unusual places and. Uh, So I'd like to see a little bit more of that, really. Yeah, it's just like there, for example, it's not letting those errors creep in when you are taking it in from behind someone. Obviously, your margin of error is extremely low at that point. And particularly as you yeah, get that last one longer in there. Interesting hit. Yeah, Hamami was sticking up. A few errors sneaking in. It was quite interesting to see how much they're rallying down the forehand side. It was pretty unusual, really, to do that. So maybe they both feel that the forehand on the opponent is a little bit weaker than the backhand. I'm not sure about that, but. Maybe they're just trying to avoid that back backhand nick, which a lot of players seem to be catching, giving yeah. a few unpredictable bounces. Nice finish there from Hamami. It is. There'd been three tins in a row before that, so Todd won't mind too much. One winner to three errors sort of ratio. We'll take that, and he probably feels like he's doing a good job of containing attacks and forcing his opponent to play the attacks from too deep in the court or you know, 
from an off balance position. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think he might be a bit disheartened that he gave it away off of his serve. I've seen a lot of that in the previous match where both servers perhaps weren't paying attention and giving their f full concentration to the shot. And a lot of winners and errors hit off the serve. Tempo's just gone up a bit here. Important point. Todd's got to halt this comeback from uh, El Hamame. There's the error. I feel like Todd's just sort of keeping the pressure on enough at the moment for Hamami to be struggling with it and have to do something special to beat him. Not giving anything cheap away here. Good control on that backhand. Oh, nice. That's the first game, 11-8. A lot of errors there from Hamami towards the back end game. Perhaps not always from a, a disadvantaged position either. Very unforced, some of them. He'll be looking to cut those out going into the second game. It's a 13-minute first game, so not the longest game we've seen first game we've seen in this tournament so far. I think the longer the game goes on, I think that'll suit Todd more than it will Hamami. Yesterday, towards the end of the game, he was looking a bit more fatigued and was making a few more errors. With Todd's style of squash, he seems to be just hitting it patiently, moving the ball into all four corners of the court very nicely at the moment. Very risk-free squash. Okay, both players are back on court for the second game, and I think, uh, yeah, I agree with what you said there. I mean, like Todd Harity has established himself, he's established his style here on the mat. And he was very much the dominant player in that, kind of patiently waiting for some errors and semi-forced errors from uh, Kareem El Hamami, who can, I think, has more to offer. He certainly hit some better quality shots of that he did at the end there. He just needs a little bit of spark of energy, I feel, to, to be able to get in front and then commit fully to his shots. But he's certainly a very fit guy, so he won't be backing away anytime soon. Yeah, I agree with you. It sort of almost looks like this passive nature of Todd 
is taking that spark out of Kareem here. And he almost needs to get fired up and maybe put some pace into the ball and get moving around the court a bit quicker to let his true game style come out. Still sticking with your prediction? Um, I'm terrible at predictions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll stick with it. Yeah, I mean, what you can't do is just jump ship, can you? You can't jump ship too early, so there's no need to panic yet. I don't think uh, Kareem will be panicking. But yeah, your prediction does look slightly, um, slightly favourable. Good thing we're not betting men, Chris. I'm certainly not terrible at that. Wow. Unbelievable that, shot. And that was that. a perfect camera angle to show that, that increase in racket head speed there. You actually really cut that one in. Whereas I felt before when he was making errors, he was slightly pushy, wasn't he? It was a bit flat face. It was all just touch and feel. And actually, he's using the strings there a lot more, getting the edge through through the ball. An example here of just how quick he is around the court, Mammy, doing a diagonal there and just making it look easy. Yeah, he's... Um, he, he just sort of gets up from these very difficult positions and just makes it look so sort of nonchalant, doesn't he? He's uh, he just almost just brushes it off. Yeah, I think you you described it perfectly. It's just like elastic movement here, here isn't it? Sluts, goes in screeching into that forehand, sliding in, and comes out like it's nothing. Yeah, very annoying to play. It must be like one of those dolls that you push over and they just keep bouncing back up. <laughs> Not exactly what you mean. Is that a stroke there for Todd? No, just a let ball. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the right decision. Nice variation. I think that's what Todd does well. He just doesn't overuse that variation either. He he's very meticulous with what he does in terms of hitting straight lines, hitting his targets, and then he does seem to play those shots at the right time, catching Hamami off off guard there. Obviously, he got the ball back because he was. It wasn't a winning shot, but it's great to put those movements into your opponent's legs as they're the ones which fatigue you doing them multiple times over a match. Yeah, it's it's changes of pace that hurt people a lot in squash, isn't it? It's not necessarily the highest pace player that is going to hurt you the most. It's the person who can set traps and Todd is doing a good job here of, of sort of playing at a sort of high medium pace and then he'll either slow it right down with those lobs or inject a change of direction or a slightly quicker shot or just get on the ball a bit earlier. And it's it's that sort of anticipation and trying to keep up with your own movement, your own split step around the tee, which is actually really tough to keep resetting when people are doing that to you. I think that's why people talk about having a, a rhythm when you're playing squash is so important. If you can find your rhythm in a game of squash, you're less likely to get tired because you'll be moving around at your own pace. And you, even if it is a faster or slower pace in patches, as long as you're the one who's in control of that and you're feeling good, you're not going to be fatigued. Like you say, it's when your opponent's controlling your movement. If you're trying to speed it up, they're slowing down and vice versa. That's the ones which 
really hurt you. Was that good? You're almost too good by the looks of things. No questions from <laughs> Todd, just... but... That was a lovely little kill. Just no pace on that whatsoever. Stayed so short. He uh, seems to be having a bit more success on that front backhand side than he is the forehand at the moment. A few errors on the forehand and a couple of winners on the backhand side. Maybe that's why Todd's playing him down the forehand a bit more often. Right, so I presume that's a let, and he, he was after a stroke there because he felt that Todd was in his swing, but the referees deemed there's enough room to play that. And on the face of it, I think that looked like the right call by the ref. I think so. I think you've got to set that precedent early that you're not going to give too many cheap strokes early in the match so you don't get players looking for them later on. If you encourage those to be played... I think as a whole, you get a much better free-flowing game. First, First error there. We've seen there. Yeah. I mean, sort of almost midway through the second game, that's not a bad statistic to have, is it? No, I think, to be fair to Kareem, that the pace went up in that rally. He was pushing it a little bit higher. In general, I think it's going to suit him to have that faster pace and some quick exchanges around the front where he can use his reflexes and you know his, his fast hands, which he's definitely got. But that is not something he can afford there. That's an, yet another error on that forehand drop or volley drop from midcourt. Yeah, he is really on that forehand side. He is he seems to be a bit impatient. He's really forcing it. I'm not sure. It's an incredibly difficult shot to play that while the ball is dipping. Anyway, I know he's got the racket skills, and we've seen him play them before. But it's a very high risk, low return shot. Yeah, he's going for like typically those mistakes are going for soft off soft. So he's trying to play a soft volley drop when the ball's got no pace on it. And that is technically, like you say, it's dipping. You know, he's, he's asking a lot for himself. I'm not even sure it's the right shot when he had his opponent at the front of the court. But, you know, that's where his errors are seemingly coming from quite a lot at the moment. So he needs to sort that out. Yeah, if I was Kareem here, I wouldn't be feeling too comfortable on my forehand. I'd want to be playing as much as possible down that backhand side. A few decisions here coming into it, maybe trying to disrupt the rhythm of the game. Yeah, I felt on that one he went backwards towards his opponent with his racket, looking for the stroke. Yeah, it's just a simple let, that one, I think. There you can see Todd just kind of almost teasing him with that high uh, high lob from backhand to forehand. He's almost encouraging him, here we go, to play something exuberant, I suppose. 
Oh, what a lovely touch it is. That's amazing. That's great composure around the middle of the court. So just feather that in there and leave it so short. Yeah, it was a genuine half volley. And he's played it with a bit of cut and a lot of touch. Left that very short. This is what really impressed me with Todd yesterday. He was just controlling the pace so well around the court. He was using that height across to the forehand. And then just tidying it up nicely around the middle. And there's... It wasn't like a blistering pace, but it just didn't look like his opponent anything because he's just manoeuvring them out of position so cleverly. It's quite interesting as well because Abe Singh, who did very well in this tournament, lost out in the earlier semi-final. He plays in a similar style to this, doesn't he? You know, he's he's got like a sort of medium tempo that he wants to play at, uses hold a lot structured, soft, accurate drop shots a lot of the time and a nice weight of shot. There's a lot of similarities between two players, I think. Todd's mopping technique leaving a bit to be desired there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, you know, that is the the issue now that they've, they've got to do everything themselves, haven't they? They've got to um, not wipe their hands on the wall uh, and use the towel instead. They'll do their own mopping of any sweat patches. Um, but we get to watch and they get to play in, in, a, in, a, in a pandemic. So, I mean, <laughs> you'd rather that than no play at all. Yeah, it's fantastic to see the money being invested by the sponsors into a Challenger Tour event in particular. I know it's on the, the higher end of the Challenger Tour, but I think it's great for the sort of lower ranked players. And I know it was only accessible for um, the some of the like local players through costs, for example, but I think it's what, what the Challenger Tour needs at the moment is tournaments like this going ahead Yeah, there have been some big tournaments on for obviously top 50 players or maybe even higher than that. And, uh, you know, I think it's been a very frustrating time for people lower down in the rankings in particular. Um, and I understand, you know, the the costs have become prohibitive for putting on a tournament where you've got to have a lot of bubbles in place and COVID testing. And that makes it financially very difficult to put on lower ranked tournaments so fantastic that HCL and uh, the Indian Squash Association SRFI have, have put on this tournament and it's just great to see you know and forward with you know, live streaming and everything I think that's it's really sort of great to highlight the Challenger Tour because there's some quality squash here and it's lovely to see you know that these are the players that are challenging the next level up that you'd probably see more regularly on PSA TV. Yeah, these these sorts of players are the players that, when they do play these World Series events, are perhaps not making it past the first two two rounds most of the time. So you don't really get to see them play their style of squash. Usually they're coming up against the top seeds in those tournaments and perhaps you don't see what they've actually got and how talented they really are. So to ha have them on a stage like this where you can really see them for all their quality, it's great. Yeah, it was nice to see uh, Kareem there actually converting on one of his forehand volley drops, and it was immaculate. Both <laughs> that players was an interesting start, move. Start I think Kareem just slipped there in the back left because it's very sweaty on the court. Both players not happy with it, wanting the, rally, the ref to stop, stop the rally for safety. Yeah, there's. I, I just think that's frustration, isn't it, really, from Kareem? He's not. He was under a lot of pressure, and he slipped while he was under a lot of pressure. I mean, that's not really anybody's fault. Um, I just think he's frustrated. I uh, wonder if he'll get a conduct warning for the racket throw, but um, it doesn't look happy. I think probably the score line doesn't help, does it? No, he's he's looking a bit lost out there. I think. Well, I know he's only 9-6 down, but his 
most of his points have come from speculative shots into the front of the court. He's not, I wouldn't say he was outplaying Harity at the moment. And he needs to do something more if he wants any success in this match. Oh, I think he got that. That was a great get. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, Kareem hasn't said much because he knows he got it, didn't he? But, you yeah. know, he's just... yeah, probably just annoyed that he didn't follow up because he hit a couple of lovely was... shots and that's a lovely shot. It was just deceptive, that, from Harity. He sort of looked like he wasn't going to get there and just stuck out his racket and that front leg just flung out at the last minute and turned out to be a perfect counter drop. Here he is with three game balls. I mean, this is a lot better from Kareem al Hamami. I mean, it really, you get the feeling that he should have been taking the game like this to his opponent much earlier in the match. And it might be a case of too little too late here. Yeah, I agree. He almost just sort of turned it on as soon as he went game ball down here and played a bit more aggressively. And I think if he can almost get his mentality to play like that when he's not game ball down, he might find a bit more success here. I mean, there's three fairly quick points there. He's managed to claw back. Some excellent fielding going on. And spectators. <laughs> yeah, well, the Indians are quite good. You know, they get a lot of practice at fielding anyway. He might be getting a bit edgy here, having lost the three game balls. He needs to just reset, get his game plan back. Weather the storm of oh. Mami. Yeah, that was that was a big point, and you know that spark of life is what we we're after, wasn't it? And actually, it gives me a bit more hope that there is still life in this match. Um, you know, I think I think that if El Hamami can play like that with much more um, positive intent you know actually commit to his shots a bit more rather than just kind of pushing it as drops he's actually positively hitting through them when he's when he's going to the front and then following them up afterwards looking for that weaker return you know that is how he should be playing and it's how he should have been playing from the start of the match can he come back on and prove that that's what he can do in the third game so two love to Todd Harity here um, all going to plan for him. Both players taking the full two minutes here after that slightly longer 20-minute second game. 
think the slightly longer game time suggests what we were talking about, that Hamami was perhaps a bit more in that second game. Looked a bit more promising towards the end. Hopefully he can sort of, despite that error on the last point, can carry that momentum he was picking up through to the start of this third game. Give us some more good squash to watch. Yeah, and I think if he does continue like that, then he might force Todd Harrity to change his game plan a bit. When Todd's been putting up some, um, some, some lobs, and he's almost encouraging his opponent to attack at points. Um, but he's got to be careful of that. So if he finds his range, then you have to be really careful about lifting the ball out and hitting more cross courts. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm encouraged to see that I think this will be certainly more um, open. Well, oh. just catching his leg there. Definitely an, an accident a, there. A leg ball. I think that's a sensible decision. Yeah, felt it, didn't it? I actually thought Todd did pretty well to get that previous pickup back because he'd been taken in quite well by uh, Kareem. I want to make sure that this area of the court is actually not sweaty because if you're doing a big lunge into that front backhand, you don't want to be slipping and going the full splits and overdoing it there for your hamstring. Yeah, that's the, the two front corners are the important ones, aren't they, where you're sort of almost chucking your full body weight in there on the, on the one leg. There's a lot of force going through that floor there. You need to be as stable as possible and confident going in. And a quick winner there from Pamami off the gonna, surf. Yeah, I've got to presume that was a, you know, another great volley drop <laughs> winner. It was too quick for us to see, wasn't it? Yeah. I think Harrison needs to be careful here and not almost see the finish line too early and carry on playing the way he was playing into the third game. Like you, like you said, it's been a bit more open so far, these first four rallies. Yeah, he's got to recognise you here from the end of the second game and, you know, the fact that Kareem is two love down and this is him almost out of the tournament. Oh. Could almost hear the strings from here on that shot. Yeah, that was cut. <laughs> Done well to still be in this. He's forced the error there from Harity. Yeah, it was a great little counter exchange there, wasn't it? We had some tight shots going into the front, good movement around each other. And I was saying on one of the other matches that are commentated on that those counter drops are so marginal, whether you get them right and they can really glue in and give you a massive advantage, if not win the point, and you miss them by an inch and suddenly your opponent's all over it or you give away a stroke. So marginal, those. Mami taking a 5-2 lead here in this third game. Interesting to see how he's playing the ball more around the front. Todd going with him a bit more. Just needs to find his length again. But Hamami's just hit a bit of consistency here with his short balls and it's paying off. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this and thinking it's a bit sort of... Um, it's, a, it's a mixture of belief and uh, also kind of using his technique a bit better, he's he's getting a bit more stable over the ball before he takes it in, and I think he's just taking it in with more purpose when he's going in, whereas 
in the previous two games, he was floating it in way too much. It was going in too soft and too flat. And actually, he's, he's accelerating the racket through the ball and getting some cut on it and committing to those shots, you know. So that, that sort of that belief that... But he's, he's in a position where he has to. Has to take it on a bit more now. I mean, it's now or never for him, isn't it? He's too loved down. He needs to start making moves if he wants to get back in this match. Interesting to see about how maybe as the ball softens up, it might suit Hamami and more. There we go again. Being positive and being proactive, I mean, he's certainly finding his style that suits the match. This maybe suits the court and the player. But is it too late? Has he left it too late? You know, he's got to do this three times. And if he gets off to a bad start in either of the next two games, he could be in a world of trouble. And he hasn't won this one yet. I was just about to say, it's, it's not over the finish line. 8-4 is a... It's a dangerous scoreline. It's a big point. This nine, nine, four, and five, eight, two very different scorelines. There you go. Harity takes the point. Nice tight squeeze on that backhand wall, forcing the error. Lovely bit of touch around the front of that. That variation that you were talking about. I mean, it was such a short swing on that forehand there, but he had so many options. He's got the lift, which he's been showing. He had the forehand counter drop. You can always flick that with your wrist and punch it straight or cross court. And then he opted for the cross court faded drop across the front and it's the right option at that time and played it really well. That one's coming off the frame a bit, but I'm sure he'll take it. It's 9-6 down. He's asking about a double earlier in the rally, but I saw that ball, and I'm, well, I'm pretty sure I saw that ball good. But, you know, players get ahead that it's down, don't they? Yeah, I mean, obviously, they've got the best the best views, but it's interesting to see how sometimes at the speed of the rally you miss see things. Everything looked clean for me from here. And well, this Parity will be interesting. 8-9, He's fought him his way back, isn't he? And you know, I just think that Kareem's come off his style now, and Todd's forcing his way in front a bit more, and he's been a bit more positive himself, a bit more proactive. Oh, it's a great slam dunk there, mid there. Yeah, and that's the danger, I mean, from uh, Todd's like style of play there, where he does lift quite a lot um, out the front corners. And, you know, if somebody's going to go for it, well, you're putting it in their hands a little bit. So there is a bit of a danger there when your opponent gets on song. Yeah, up until this point, it's been giving him a lot of errors, so I can see why he is still playing it. But... Uh... Uh, it's, that's the difference in this third game. Just a few more errors sneaking in from Harity and Hamami being a bit more consistent with his short balls, being a bit more aggressive in his style, really seems to pay off there.
The players coming back on court for the fourth game. And we've got a match on our hands now after Todd Harity took a two-love lead. But Kareem El Hamami has fought back and got the third game. And he was much more positive and proactive in his style and actually committed to attacking the front of the court. And he got a lot more right than wrong in that third game. So if he can continue that, then we've got a real tussle on our hands. We'll see if uh, he can keep the error rate down. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Hamami's got the, the physical side to his game to be able to keep that up for three uh, for two more games, sorry. Harity's not going to make this easy for him. He's going to go back to how he was playing in the first two games, moving around the corners, really making that court big for Hamami. Well, I'm not sure it's a stroke, which is his argument, but it might well be a let, that. didn't he play that he literally had yeah. the whole of the front wall to just hit that is an open goal that one and he's chosen not to play it and I think the ref is quite it's... rightly I mean it's potentially a no let it's potentially a no let yeah it is I'm just a bit lost as to why he's, why he's not played that Not the start he would have wanted here, Kareem. No. He looks frustrated, doesn't he? Yeah, he's not he's not looked comfortable all match here against Todd. He had a brief spell in that third game there where he he seemed to be finding his range and rhythm around the court, but the start of this fourth game is back to how it was in the first two. Great reaction volley there. Yeah. Oh, and then you hit length catching him out. Just feel that he's not really done what he was doing well in that third game, which was really commit to those front court attacks. And now he's gone back to trying to float them in and push them in. And it's just not working for him. You know, Todd's reading them. He's quick enough to get on those early and hurt him back. And, Plus a couple of errors, and he's finding himself five love down. That's gone away from him very quickly, and from here it looks a tough task. I mean, I've been I'm sure we've all been in this position as professional players when you just get, lose the first game and you lose a string of points, you're down. It's incredibly hard mentally to fight your way back into the match. Needs a bit of fortune here, a few of his shots coming off, maybe. But it's looking all harity at the moment, racing to a seven love lead. Of course, if he does win this, Todd, then he'll be playing um, an Indian player, Mahesh, in the final. That'll be a really good match, I think, having watched a lot of them this week. It'll be an absolute battle for the tee, that game. Both players like to step up and volley and control. Oh, well, well that is on the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, You've got to volley those, Todd, like if you're going to get that <laughs> back. <laughs> that eight one up, I'm not sure he's going to be too bothered about dropping that point, but might be a little bit of a, a relief from... Her mammy's side. Yeah, nobody likes to get bagel, do they? Oh, 
I mean, it's been very the ruthless. On the wall here. It's, yeah, it's been clinical and ruthless. I think it's quite impressive, really. Yeah, he's really not wanting to waste any time in this fourth game, is he? He's trying to get. He's on that ball. You can tell he can always smell the victory. He's bounding around there looking really comfortable. And that gives him nine match balls. Pros talk a lot about closing a match. And I think, uh, uh, you know, having lost a third game, that's a quite a typical situation. And Todd has done it in some style there, hasn't he? So he takes the match 3 1. Um, and he's into the final. An incredibly professional fourth game there from Todd. Hamari just a bit frustrated with the referee. Those first couple of points in that game seemed to got it, get inside his head and he just lost his way for the rest of it. Couldn't afford to do that there. But that sets up the final for Mahesh versus Todd and I think that's going to be one to look forward to tomorrow. Just yeah, that'll be one versus match. three feet. Okay, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the uh, second woman's semi-final of the day. We have uh, Tanvi Kanna from India up against second seed Anna Mawats from Egypt. Joining me today, Owen, Owen Taylor. How are you doing, Owen? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Andrew. Just coming off the back of that very impressive performance from Todd in the second men's semi-final. Yeah, really I thought it was impressive. Yeah. yeah, it was impressive in the fourth. It's pretty, very similar to what we saw yesterday. A good control around the middle and took it in nice and well. Plenty of variations. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he, how he follows that through into the final. But uh, yeah, for now we've got this match starting. The semi-final earlier with the Egyptian battle won by Malik Kamal. Seems she followed on that vein of form she was hitting yesterday of just taking everything in short and pretty much hitting everything she went for. Yeah, she was. Uh, she didn't mess around. Although I thought Ismail played well in parts. She obviously played well in the first and got herself back into it in the fourth, but just got let up with Kamal. You know, she just has a, such an ability to rattle off points, and I think it's going to be pretty similar for for Hannah. Hannah Moats, she also has that ability to just wrap up points nice and quickly. Um, although I feel that Tanvi Kanna is a pretty good mover and she might be able to put these balls back onto the front wall, meaning that she, Hannah's going to have to be ready to hit a couple more shots than she probably has done so far in this event. Yeah, I mean, Hannah hasn't spent longer than 20 minutes on court so far. In any of her matches, so he's obviously going to be coming into this extremely fresh. She's yeah, she's not messing around here either. She's uh, straight onto anything that's just left a little bit short, cutting in that nice backhand volley drop. Yeah, I think she's set out her stall early here, isn't she? And she's not <laughs> taking any prisoners, she's going straight in. First yeah, opportunity of the rally, taking it in short. Straight through to a quick six-love lead without really giving 
Canna, uh, any chance to settle at the moment? That's a fantastic length through to the back of the court. Oh, it's pretty impressive so far. It's just rattled through the first seven points. Yeah, absolutely blistering start here. Stroke there, perhaps, given kind of uh, an in into this game. Well, I thought she was going to volley that then. Just looked like it had a good opportunity for a volley, but decided against it. I felt that was definitely a let minimus, minimal from that camera angle. Yeah. She was definitely up, up behind her very quickly. I'm not sure if it was the camera angle or, yeah, like you say, it's, we seem to be getting all the wrong decisions <laughs> yeah. currently, don't we? But yeah. It's, uh, uh, that, yeah. It was a good shot from uh, Kana because Moat's went for the cross court nick and she just guided it into that front nick oh, she's got herself back in here yeah i think that's where she's going to have success here she's going to be having to be the counter puncher in this game i think but seeing as how aggressive the egyptian player is yeah i would agree with you there she's going to have to just keep absorbing a little bit first before she gets an opportunity I think she wants to try and be competitive here. She's done well because this was seven love within very quick time and she's pulled it back to five seven. not what you want to be seeing. She's uh, gone for something absolutely outrageous there. Yeah, I'm not sure what she was trying to do there, actually. She was trying to flick a cross-court drop-in or just it, the ball squirted, squirted up or at her, her a little bit. I'm not sure. It was a little bit strange because you wouldn't see her normally try that kind of shot. Yeah, it's extremely high risk. It wasn't really on. Yeah. Especially when you've just got yourself back into it. Yeah, you'd think she'd be pushing on here and looking to make these elongate these rallies and almost do what she was doing to get those points and play a solid game, wait for Hannah to take it in and then counter punch and we'll make the error like that. I think that's when this uh, Tanvi is going to have a lot of success here. Yeah, I don't. I don't... I mean, Hannah's not really been tested in the opening two rounds, so anything she's kind of hit so far has either been clean winner. So if the ball's going to keep coming back and you're on day three of the tournament, it might just take a little bit of adjustment for her to get used to, oh, this is coming back, not just going to be a quick winner and I go and pick up the next point and serve. Oh, that's nice. But it's just, yeah, ruthless, isn't it? It's just not letting Tanvi get away with any loose balls around the front. Giving herself four game balls here. There's a better rally from Canna there, though, making H Hannah do a bit more movement around the court, getting off the middle. Unfortunately, just gave her a bit too much space and time in that last shot and got away nicely.
as you can see here on the screen a quick run of points there from Moats at the start before Tanvikana managed to get back into it and the second seed from Egypt will start start the second game and uh, let's see if she starts the second as she did the first yeah I think if Kana can sort of eliminate that blistering start again from Motaz and get herself into this second game here she might be able to do a bit better but with the shot that quality it's great length great width it'd be hard for her to do yeah, she did well to get that exactly. serve back as well. <sighs> yeah, it was a great serve straight into the nick. I like the way I like the way Hannah moves up the court so quickly and then gives herself so many options at the front. She can hit that straight drop. She can hold it and hit cross. It can just be so hard for Tanvi to cover all those shots and all these options. So she's so quick in position. Didn't quite pick the right shot there, but yeah, it's a great way of being deceptive. That which I think sometimes the subtleties go unnoticed when you're watching the top level squash players, where they think deception has to be holds and flicks and sort of something different around the court. But actually, you can be deceptive with your movement. Like there, Hannah was racing into the front of the court, looking like she was going to hit it really hard and just hit a nice soft backhand fade across the front. And it's very hard to read for your opponent. Yeah, and again there, just quick in position and just whip, whips around the boast. And it also adds that little bit of extra pressure to Tamvi's shot because she knows then that Hannah's moving so quickly onto it that she might pull one down the middle or she might clip the top of the tin knowing that that little bit of extra pressure of Hannah's movement is, is just... Causing a little bit of stress on her. Did well to play that because I thought she was going to ask. It's not quite getting the, so, the lift she wanted out of that front forehand there. No, so pretty similar to the first here. Hannah racing off to a 7 1 lead and. Not not really messing around here. That's a good shot from, from Kana. Can she mount a comeback just like she did in the first? Well, that's a good counter drop in the front. Just the way she was able just to roll over her hand there, just to control it to get back on the back on the front wall. Yeah, again, it's just she's got that lead now that she can just sit on and take this game at her own pace. Very dominant performance so far. Oh, oh, fantastic shot. What a drop shot into the front corner there. She's got just a big spring great. in her step. Oh. Yeah, just fantastic. Just so early onto everything, taking it before the back wall again, just applying that little bit of extra pressure to Tam V, and it's making life difficult at the moment. Yeah, she's struggling to deal with this pressure at the moment isn't she it's just relentless quality from the Egyptian that was, that was good she did manage to get onto that ball at the front quickly then and hit it past Hannah but still seven game balls to come here yeah, I think in that rally, just her quality into the front was slightly better, meaning that she could read Hannah and where she was putting the ball and allowed her to move it and hit a nice winner to the back of the court. Saving two game balls here, but still a long way to go. 
Yeah, it was interesting that that body language there from Hannah. She just looked like she just lost that little bit of a spring there. Let's see if she can't sit back. She crunches that return and that. <laughs> so didn't take long for her to get that. <laughs> yeah, she got, came back very quickly. <laughs> So as we see there, another impressive run of points there for Hannah Moatz in the mid part of that game. Uh, quickly racing up to 7-2 and straight back on to court for the start of this, this third game. What do you think, Owen, if you're coaching Tamvi at the moment? Well, it's a tough ask here to come back into this when Hannah's in this form, but I think Tamvi just maybe needs to cut out the angles and just sort of starve Hannah of any opportunities and try and hit some better lengths towards the back straight and long and really try and pick her off with perhaps a bit more patient squash but at the moment it's Hannah who's hitting the better length not enabling Tanvi to do that so it's going to be a real battle here for her, for Tanvi to get back into this I agree. It's not going to be easy to get her back back into this, but she, as you said there, she had a, a bit of a better chance when she lengthened out some of the rallies in that mid part of the first. Didn't really have an opportunity to do that in the second. Yeah, it's just shot from that. But... Sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say Hannah's obviously playing with a lot of confidence as well, so she's got to break that. Yeah, I agree. I think in that first rally there, just Tanvi just chucking in a boast in the back of the court, which just didn't need to be hit. I think she needs to keep Hannah behind her as long as possible here. She's just so lethal from the front. I mean, you might get a few errors like she has in the last two points, but as a whole, she's being controlled. I can't afford to give her that time at the front. Not, that's not what we've seen so far. That's three errors this game from Hannah. Just yes, almost a complete flip of what we've seen in two, two games. Oh, yeah, we've been seeing a hit clean winner so far, and so it's just the rallies have got a little bit longer from Tanvi here. That is severe. Yeah, you've got to be so quick and explosive to get that back. It's just the defence from the front of the court from Tanvi not quite giving her enough time to recover back to the tee. That's better. It's a good length. That's what that's what she needs to do here to get some success. Yeah, she just looked like she was going to hit that just above the tin and then just got it just below the mid-court, the service line there on the front wall and just kind of pushed it through to the back of the box and found a much better length. Something for Hannah to think about, which so far she hasn't really had anything to think about so far. Yeah, I don't think Hannah throughout the whole tournament has been behind by more than two points. So, interesting to see how she'll cope with this deficit here, being faced with it for the first time.
That wasn't far away either. You can see from Hannah's reaction that she knew she'd left an opportunity there for Tamvi to hit that winner. Yeah, I would have liked to see Tamvi just sort of keep that rally going there. I know you've got to threaten the short ball sometimes, but I think perhaps when you've got that 5-2 lead and your opponent's making a few errors and giving you a few more opportunities, perhaps just keep playing what you're doing and wait for that clear-cut opportunity. I felt like she forced that one a little bit, but she's got her three-point lead back here. Definitely don't want to be leaving the ball in that kind of area against Hannah there. So it's just, yeah, you know, just had established a three point lead and then it's just quite quickly lost the next two points. It just shows you how consistent you've got to be to beat these top players. Just two shots there where she perhaps miss hit her left and think about hit her targets and she's getting punished for it. So she needs to try and get that bit more consistent here going into the back end of this third game now. Almost caught the nick off the serve there. Oh, that's too good. I've seen quite a bit of that this week of like someone hitting a really good drive into the back forehand and then stepping quickly across on the forehand side for the winner. Yeah, I think if you can hit a low, hard, aggressive length on this court, you get rewarded for it. Because, like you said, there's some funny bounces coming out the back. On a glass court, anyway, it's hard to hard to do. But, and then she's getting rewarded but from her good shot by Tanvi returning the ball around that service box area. And that's that's your bread and butter for, for Hannah there. She's hiding up nicely. Yeah, I thought, I thought that was a wrong, yeah. That, the last shot from Hannah there, I thought that should have been a straight drive down the line, not the drop shot, because Tambi was right up next to her. All the space was at the back of the court then. Might be the... Uh, seven. Go on, mate. The, yeah, it might be the pressure there of her, her actually being behind towards the latter stages of this game here. Maybe she's not, not coping with it too well. She's just almost going lower and lower on that tin and making more mistakes rather than getting it back to where she was and asserting her dominance around the length section of the game. Yeah, and it, it can be difficult, that, because, you know, this is semi-finals and she's played, this will be her third match and she's only been on court 15 and 17 minutes. It can be quite hard to start your tournament, really, in a semi-final. Didn't need that really from there, Tamvi. She probably wanted to make that rally a little bit longer and a little bit harder. Keep keep Hannah pre under pressure. That's going to be a stroke. She gets a stroke there. Yeah, it's just a bit disappointing to see. Her. You'd like to see a bit more discipline from Tamvi here on those points where she does just sort of elongate those rallies in crucial points and not give away the cheap mistake and let the Egyptian back in it. She's done that a couple of times this game already, and I think there's only so many times you're going to be let off and get get away with that. Yeah, you don't. You've got you've got Hannah here under a bit of pressure. As you say, you don't want to just gift it straight back to her. You've got to keep building that pressure for what four or five rallies continuous and see see what Hannah's made of. Well, the last game ball, see if she can convert it. Just 
Gets a little bit awkward when that ball gets into that back corner. Just kind of squirts out at you a little bit quick sometimes in there. Hannah didn't fancy taking on that drop and she squeezed it. She's, there she's back in it. There we are, just completely against the run of play in those first two games. She's managed to open up a lead at the start of that third game and hold on to it just 11-9 in that third. It's good for Tanvi. It would be good if she can keep it going going into the fourth game. Here we go for game number four. The Egyptian leading two games to one. Tanvi having come back and won the third. Let's see if she can continue as you said there, Owen, of extending the rallies and making things a little bit more difficult for Hannah. Yeah, she just got a little bit edgy towards that. Hannah, that is, got a bit more edgy, started going a bit lower on those winning shots when she was under pressure and making a few more mistakes in that third game. I don't think we're going to see any change of style though from Hannah. I think she's going to keep going with the aggressive nature and it's got to be Tanvi who's got to be disciplined to find good lines and length. Not the start that Tanvi wanted here. Yeah, I think yeah, I felt the, the line was probably to the left there. Yeah, I think she was almost struggling to get there anyway and maybe saw the let ball as an out opportunity, but the ref is a bit wiser to that given the no lap which i think was the correct decision yeah i think that's the first one we've we've all agreed on <laughs> that's not That'll gonna be, be a lay either there. yeah i felt that shot was too good there from from tanvi <laughs> Is um, closer to the floor than the top of the tin. That one didn't quite make the adjustment quick enough. Yeah, almost tried to do the full adjustment with her racket arm there and the racket face rather than moving her feet and getting into the correct shot. Well, after the four love leads, Tanvi's got back into this now. It's a great winner there. 
Yeah, pretty similar to what we saw in one of the matches last night. Like big swings in in momentum by both players. That's a fantastic bows from the half court area. Just so quickly how she whips it around the front. Tanvi's quick as yeah. well, you know. It's not like Tanvi's slow. It's, she's pretty quick, and she didn't really see that to get going. I think it's what you said. She just got in position so well there, and despite being in the back of the court, she got her body behind it, hit it with a really open stance, and it meant she could have hit a cross court or straight length, and opted for the boast and absolutely ripped it around the corner. And yeah, it wasn't hard to read that for Tanvi. Oh, that's beautiful. That backhand drive, we've got a perfect angle to see that backhand drive almost die at the back of the court and set up that front court winner for Hannah. Yeah, I thought Tanvi did well to get, the, get that length back in the first place. It was, I mean, you could see it on the back wall. It was bouncing millimetres above the floor on the back wall, so she did well yeah, to get her racket underneath. Yeah, I was impressed with that pick-up. But Hannah's not messing around. She's put a string of points together. 4-3 through to 8-3. Yeah, I think she's just found a range a bit. I think she might have in a combination with a bit more pressure from Tanvi in that third game and perhaps seeing the finish line and going for too many winners. That was the combination which led to the uh, Indian player winning that third game. But here she's got her base length back, hitting more aggressively into the back of the court, freeing up that space at the front and it's it's been all the Egyptians away so far, but Tanvi's not giving up. Oh, it's nice. Because she's pushed, she's just held that just at the top of the swing there a little bit. Looked like she was going to go short as she has done for most of the match and then just pushed it a little bit deeper. And Tanvi was just caught rush, rushing to the front a little bit and then saw that it wasn't going there and tried to push back but couldn't quite get behind it and then skied it out of the court. Well, that yeah, brings up... Really good. That. Brings up six match balls for Hannah Mawats to make it an all-Egyptian final tomorrow. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how she, if she does make it to the final, obviously no writing off anything yet, but it's looking very much like that. It'll be an all-Egyptian final at the moment. It'll be interesting to see how she does play against Malak Kamal, because she's also an incredibly attacking player. Yeah, it's a shame we didn't quite get the camera angle for that, because that looked a massive taxi. <laughs> We always love to see that. <laughs> oh, that beautiful. Beautiful. That oh, was really nice, that little backhand in the front there to finish it, because that, that was a tight drop shot from, from Tam V, and she just managed to squeeze it off the sidewall for a little trickle bust winner in the front. So 